And good morning. Uh, thanks for staying with us. Uh, it's time for what we call Off the Press, our review of uh, the major stories making headlines across the country um, uh, um, Well, this morning. And we're joined by Mr. Chris Wando, the publisher of uh, CKN News. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank you very much for having me. I was just saying just before we kick off, you know, that it feels like some of these stories, um, you know, have, have come up before. If it doesn't feel like it's the first time we're discussing these issues, it feels like it's the same story, just a different, you know, coloration. It's just it. the same of the same, as I said. So, <laughs> and we continue moving in, in um, around circular all the way. So, it's so, the so, so why do you think that it keeps happening? It, nothing seems to change um, over time. It's because we don't learn from history. Uh, most often they are not, um, both the gladiators, the politicians, and even we, uh, um, the citizens, don't seem to learn from history, unlike uh, people of other countries. Um, this happens time and time again, and within a day or two, we just sweep that under the carpet and move to another yeah. um, story, and, and that's just it, and they have become it. And also people have also become so entrenched in the system that they feel that um, nothing can happen to them. So until we start, until we continue and start holding people accountable for their yeah. actions, then we're, we're not going to get anywhere. So that does it. All right, let's kick start with um, stories on the Punch newspapers this morning. Let's see as many of them as we can take. Um, it says here, publish loan details or face legal action. NLC, TUC, and others tell the federal government. Nigeria's oil projects threatened as IOCs suffer $27.8 billion loss. Also, NCDC tracking 11,000 COVID-19 contacts nationwide. It's interesting. Resumption. Stay at home. Federal government tells students with cough and other symptoms. And also on the point this morning, don't let the FIRS kill and bury Nipost. Postal Service uh, Chairman uh, cries out. And of course, there's also a COVID-19 update um, on the Punch uh, newspapers uh, um, uh, this morning. Um, I'm, I think we can we can kick off with some of these uh, major ones. So let, let's quickly also share. Nigerians facing harsh economic difficulties despite high accumulated debt, says uh, Labour and others. APC and PDP trade words over $2.4 billion Chinese loan and failed $400 million Abuja CCTV project. Uh, Kalu, Dwaga, and Ibori disagree with Akpabio over alleged NDDC contracts. And a man dies um, after... Uh, herbalist defrauds a family of five million naira. Ogun buckles and uh, reverses private students 25,000 naira COVID-19 uh, fee. I actually spoke with the SA Today Ogun State Governor this morning confirming that report. Airpiece sacks 70 pilots and others blames coronavirus uh, uh, economic downturn. Uh, one or two other stories this morning. Businessman detained in uh, on lies order, um, sues the minister and IG and demands, uh, I think, uh, 300 million, I believe. Um, also, second um, NNPC ex-GMD dies within three months. These are the, the lead stories in the punch this morning. Um, it's so much, um, uh, Mr. Wando. I don't know. I'm not sure where you, you would pick up from. Uh, we, we, we start with the lead headline, uh, which is the... Uh, NLCT, you see other stuff, FG2, publish loan details or face legal action. And um, it's appropriate uh, because um, the rate at which we are accumulating um, loans uh, is um, uh, <laughs> it's becoming so worrisome. Yeah. Um, it's becoming a monthly and even weekly um, issue. And um, <laughs> most of the details of this um, is not known to Nigerians. Uh, the government just go uh, go to the uh, national assembly, which has agreed that anything that the president brings, they will approve, and uh, within themselves they debate. Though they are the representative of the people, but most often they are not. This debt is not going to be paid by 360 uh, members of the House of Representatives or 109 yeah, of senators. Not. It will be paid by over 200 million Nigerians. So we need to need details of this uh, loan. And when you put uh, put that. Um, face to face with what's um, the probe going on in the House of Reps now with the Chinese uh, loans, uh, you've come to realize that we, there's need for worry. Um, not minding what the Minister for Transportation said a few days ago, and that, Niger that we should collect the loan first, then we can start asking um, for the details and start approving. That shouldn't be. We can as well go and sign away our life. Although the people say sovereignty, I, I don't, I'm not one of those that believe that we are signing away sovereignty. Yeah. But Behind every loan um, taken, there's always a, a caveat. 
And I believe that's what the Chinese are saying, that um, if you default on this loan, then the collaterals that which you have presented before us will be taken forcefully uh, by us. So um, there's need for us to look at the details of this thing. And where we think that is not necessary for us, then, that, then I also believe, I'm one of those that believe that we might not, there's nothing wrong in taking loans. United States of America, United Kingdom, and the, uh, the developed countries of the world, they live on loans. Even your businesses, you depend on loan. Yeah. It's not just picking the loan that is matter. What do you do with the loans? And that is what the problem is, because our people collect these loans, they relute it, and that is the problem. Internally, we see what is going on. The level of pros go with NDDC, um, this and this and that, where people are just embezzling billions and billions and of Naira belonging to Nigerians. So I still believe that we can still look internally. It's not everything that we seek loans for. Yeah. We can still look at our ideas and areas where we can also uh, generate some level of incomes and use them for some of these. And I think, I think it was also one of the stories in the pond this morning yeah. where um, it was mentioned that, you know, with all the debt that we currently are in, you know, Nigerians are still suffering. So yes. it doesn't seem like a lot has been done with it, the, with the it is. And you know, the the, uh, the terrible part of it is that we might not even be the ones paying these loans. It may be our children and our children's children. Because the, if you look at uh, the stretch of this loan, some of them go for 20 years, yeah. some go for 30 years, and the rest of them. If you know how we got to where we are today, I remember just some few years back, the former president was able to, um, Olushan Gwabasanjo was able to negotiate and Definitely. clear up most of these foreign um, debts. But how many, within how many years now we've accumulated so much and we are still accumulating? Yeah. So um, it's a thing of worry. And um, this government presently, uh, to me, since we have borrowed more than any other government since inception, um, um, since 1960, and that in itself should be worrisome. So this is not this government that is going to pay back this loan. They are collecting the loans, but this is accumulated loan that be paid by... Um, governments and governments after them. So we should I, I, be very I careful. To, before we move on to the next story, I want you to quickly speak on the bites that the NLC and the TUC still has. Yeah. Well, uh, to a large extent, I believe that but some of us don't no longer take them seriously. Um, NLC is no longer what it used to be. Um, the TUC also is no longer what it used to be. Uh, with some uh, insight, uh, the NLC of those days uh, fight for the people. But uh, with all sense of humility, um, the NLC leadership of these days fights for themselves more than the workers they're supposed to represent. You see what is going on with the minimum wage. 18, we have most um, states couldn't pay 18,000 naira. We jumped to 30,000 naira. Majority, if not over 60 to 70 percent of the state, cannot even pay that. And NLC don't even have much to do. Um, they can, they're only backing and can't bite. So that in itself is a And the, um, for life, in terms of um, derivables for Nigerians, it's getting worse. Yeah. The situation is getting worse. The economy is getting worse. Restrenchment is going on. Um, all sorts of things. And then with the COVID-19 that finally came and crippled everything. So for me, um, I, I don't have so much faith in the NLC. And right. the two you see of, as it's here presently, but I hope they can improve. The NCDC is tracking 11,000 COVID-19 contacts nationwide. Uh, quick reactions to that one also. That, that has been always a problem. Um, contact tracing has always been an issue for us. Um, we're, we're also not testing as much as we can, or we should. And that in itself is causing a lot of problem. And now we are opening up. Uh, we've opened up most of our businesses. Um, uh, worship center, churches, and mosques have been opened up. Uh, students are being asked to go back to school. That in, in, that in itself is going to cause a lot of problems for us. We've um, unlocked interstate movements. Um, um, people move from one part of the country. The problem we are having is that we are not testing as much as we are. And there is no will within, the, within people that have even tested to be able to give necessary information yeah. for contact tracing. And that itself is a problem. So if um, the date um, situation is right, it's about um, close to 900 and going to about 1,000, then we have a serious problem. Then, but and recently, you've come to realize what it, um, we are looking at the issue of the vaccines. Yeah. OK? Um, everybody all over the world are making sure that we will What are we doing in our own? Uh, to guys find this kind of homegrown solution to our own problem. Also, we are not doing much in that. Um, so it is a problem, but I believe that sooner than later, we'll be able to find a solution to this issue. But as it's where, um, it is a problem for us. And uh, the earlier we'll be able to nick this in the board, the better for us. And most especially, 
Nigerians don't, us, most Nigerians still don't believe that we have COVID-19, and that in itself is a problem. It's a problem. Um, there's one other story I think uh, we should just quickly also uh, look at. Uh, Nigeria's oil projects, uh, um, uh, projections rather threatened as IOC suffered $27.8 billion uh, loss. If we, let's uh, take that one just before we move to um, um, our next paper. Well, um, you know what is happening in the international market. Uh, we've been having serious issues. Um, the COVID-19 is, in fact, oil, um, oil drop as little as about $10 at a point, um, up to eight and rest of them. Um, but this are, is a big problem uh, for, for us also. But my take in this is that if we are doing what we're supposed to be doing, we might not be having so much issue because ours is a mono, uh, a mono economy where we depend solely on oil. On oil. Yeah. Uh, if we can be able to diversify our economy as it should be, and uh, also look at situations where we can be able to tap into other minerals within the country where we can, so that we can have enough strength for export. That in itself is best. As it were, the more we continue to depend on just oil and oil and oil, that itself will be able, because cost of production will either go up and down. That will also, will, will also be determined by international markets. And also, we're in competition with so many other countries across the globe. Although we're members of OPEC, not every um, country is a member of OPEC. So even if you are cutting um, oil production within OPEC, there are still some other countries that also determine China, Russia, United States, and the rest of them. They on their own can also determine, determine what, the what happens in the international yeah. market. And that in itself is a problem for us. All right. Um, we have um, other papers that we're also going to be looking through uh, uh, this morning. Remember, of course, it's a review of all the you know, major newspapers across the country. Nigeria, this is on The Guardian now. Nigeria misses out on COVID-19 vaccine trials. And also only South Africa, Egypt um, are participating in project. Experts fear phobia may scuttle efforts. And it's something you just also mentioned yeah, about just mentioned what it. efforts uh, we yes, are uh, putting did. in with regards to um, uh, yeah. COVID-19 vaccine. Exactly. Exactly. Um, also on The Guardian this morning, there's a couple of other stories that we might also um, you know, uh, go through. But let, let's start with this one um, on our efforts um, towards you know, being a part of, you know, the movement to find a vaccine and ensuring that we, of course, um, make va vaccines available for Nigerians. Yes, there have been instances where some Nigerians have claimed um, that they have a solution to um, the problem of COVID-19. Um, some have come out that they have um, been able to get vaccines that can use. Um, but that has not been verified, and that has not been... That is the work of NAVDAC. Yeah. And I would expect that NAVDAC by now would have come out with some of the... Um, analysis. Don't forget that also we went as well back of getting some vaccines from Madagascar. Um, and that, I think that we just seen that. Um, but I still believe that we, ha we can have a homegrown solution to this. Uh, we have scientists. The problem we are having is that we are uh, the, over the years we're not, we are no longer investing in most of these um, um, universities or um, colleges that these you know, on yeah. issues like this. If you understand what I'm trying to yes, say, sir. yes, we used to have them, um, but we are no longer um, uh, investing on them. It's not every time that we have a pandemic or an issue like this, we have to start running around. We can always have a home solutions to the fact that every part of the world, it is a huge market in the United States, in the United and so many advanced countries. Some already projecting by 2021, they're going to have vaccines. Some already, um, or, or already having clinical, uh, clinical trials yeah. and the rest of them. Yeah. But here, our slow pace as doing things it is always it is always a problem. I think it is high time that we look inward and ask all those that have already stated that they have such uh, let them come and prove to it. I think we can scientifically verify that and we can find a solution, home good solution to instead of us waiting for things coming from either US and the rest of them. The US death toll is over one hundred six uh, close to one hundred sixty thousand. The US will first of all treat its citizens yeah. before it can find a solution to your own problem. Yeah. The same thing with the United States of America, um, United Kingdom, the same thing with China and the rest of them. So you as a person should be able to find, if we can be able to find solutions. Obviously, to we need to. We did that with Ebola, and I think we should be able to deal with this. And also invest more in research. That um, is just you know, it. Which I that we might it. not be doing yes, a lot. Yes, we are not doing that. Um, the Nation newspapers uh, is what we're going to be looking at next. Let's see what uh, we can also find over here. Edo 2020, uh, Deputy Speaker and 16 other lawmakers uh, back Zayamu. Also, Basaki promises Monarch's better days. 
um, governors protest nation's worsening security situation. That's an interesting story, and I, I would like us to speak on that. The governors are also to meet with President Buhari and the service chiefs. Um, uh, they say the attack on Zulum is unwarranted. NDDC's 6.25 billion Naira palliatives diverted. Cracking PDP Governor's Forum of Ajayi's running mate bid, and also AP's cuts pay by 40%, Sachs uh, pilots, uh, ShopRite six uh, Nigerian investors. Um, um, uh, it's a lot. <laughs> it's it's uh, so much at the same time. <laughs> Schools reopening, a um, source of COVID-19 concern, says PTF. Leaders honor Fasomi at a funeral service and also APC to PDP account for failed 400 million naira Abuja CCTV project and uh, two billion naira China loan. That's also on the uh, nation newspapers this morning. So let's let's flip back to the first uh, page and uh, let's let's pick them up from there. You know, one after the other. Um, where do we start? Edo State. Let's start. Oh, of course, uh, the worsening situation. The worsening situation, okay. security situation in country is. Yeah. Um, um, the Bono State Governor a few days ago had a test of um, what so many other Nigerians have been going through, especially those in, uh, within the Northeast. Um, over the weeks and months, um, security agencies that have told us that um, um, Bono is practically um, free yeah. of um, attacks. And um, probably based on that information, I think the Governor decided to take a walk to Baga and some other parts of the state only to come under serious attack. Um, then, in this, uh, that in itself shows that um, we are still having serious issues, not only in the Northeast now, but across the country, yeah. which is why the governors um, are now raising alarm and think uh, it's necessary for them to see the president uh, on the issue. But the, is, is the president they are seeing, is he not aware of what is going? The president is aware. He has meeting with his uh, service chiefs uh, practically on a weekly and monthly basis. Um, the, he has meeting with um, the um, other security agencies uh, attached to this. But the fact is that for me, um, I think uh, we, there is a disconnect um, between the security agencies and probably uh, those on ground, um, the natives, um, the people from these areas, are, because um, modern warfare is not just about carrying arms, yeah. carrying guns, uh, mortars, and the rest of them. You do that more of, in, more of intelligent uh, gathering. gathering yeah. uh, how do you do that? You get intelligence gathering by making sure that you, you, you win the confidence of the people around. Because these are people, they live with these people. Whether Boko Haram or no Boko Haram, definitely Boko Haram live in there. And um, coming straight to the Northeast also, and uh, uh, exactly, I think we miss it at a point where the um, Chadian um, military did a part of their job. Um, within the lecture, had cleared that area, killed as many um, 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 Boko Haram insurgents as many as possible, and make sure that area. They were expecting our own soldiers to also clear up their own, their own side of it. But what happened? Our people let them move in, and that in itself regrouped, and now the attack is more on our side. Rather, I don't think in the last few months we've had any attack in Chad. There has not been any. Oh, so, um, for those um, looking at the calling for the uh, sack of the services, um, to me, that's a broken record. People like us have talked and talked and talked and, and we're tired of So, the president said until he is the one that appoints and he will be the one yeah. to let them go. So, that is that uh, for sure. Uh, but going to, let's talk to you about Edo. <laughs> <laughs> Edo, <laughs> your state, your state so. actually. <laughs> so, uh, the gladiators are digging in. Uh, I, uh, some of them have started going back to the street to eat corn, as they were doing in <laughs> four, four years ago, and eating roasted corns and um, promises and um, counter promises, people do jumping from one point and the other and rest of them. But at the end of it, I think it's those people that will determine. Um, but my own worry is that there are two people, there are two major people on the ballot, and that is Obaseke and Ezeyem. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether former chairman of um, APC, Adams Oshemole, is on the ballot. Because I see him speaking more for the candidate of the APC than we hear him from the candidate yeah. of the APC. I don't know how that is going to work out because the chairman himself is carrying a lot of baggage, quote and unquote, as it were, which also led to his uh, existing the chairmanship of uh, APC. How that is going to pan out in a do state, I don't know. But I think um, rather they should, they should face the issues rather than being personal. The do people want to know what they 
can be able to deliver. Yeah. But most of the stakeholders, I need, if you don't know, if <laughs> my wife is from Edoste, so I'm your in <laughs> So I, I have a stake. So, but seriously, um, I think um, what will happen uh, uh, on September 19th is going to be, uh, we're going to determine yeah. the way forward for certain people politically. And, um, but it's going to be a two horse race between the APC and PDP. Whether the APC, uh, and the funniest thing about it is that that is our politics. The same person that is in APC today was in PDP, was the candidate of PDP four years ago. Four years ago. Then yeah. the party, that, is, that shows you how we play our politics. So, but issues should be, we should be issue based. And that is what we don't do in this country. Yeah. We just try to be personal, go personal, rather than saying what I can deliver or what I've delivered. If the governor feels that he has done well in the past four years, then he should tell the people of Edo State what he has done mm -hmm. and how, why he thinks he deserves another um, program. Then, then if the be. candidate of the P a a APC feels that he can do better, tell the people of Edo why you think you can do better than this guy, what this guy has done. I think that is going to, that should uh, be. But the INEC, everything is going to fall within the I mean, of INEC, yeah. how to be able to handle the issues. The security agencies should also be at the lab. Because from what we are seeing already, there is the possibility that we might have some level of violence. Right. violence. Let's, so, let's quickly rush through the uh, Tribune uh, newspapers this morning so what we can quickly find over there before we wrap this up. Uh, federal government orders returning students to undergo temperature checks. Um, also, TUC plan protests over EFCC, NDDC, and NSITF uh, corruption ill-advised, says the presidency. Tell your party to account for 460 million Abuja CCTV project loan, APC tells uh, Atiku. And of course, uh, once again, air pieces in the news all over the place, sacking 70 pilots and slashing salaries. Um, attacks on Zulum shows we are all vulnerable, says uh, Coyote Fahemi, and COVID-19 vaccines now in phase three cl uh, clinical trials. Um, this is a story from the Tribune. I want us to quickly uh, deal with, uh, of course, returning students going back to school and um, um, also uh, maybe talk about air peace uh, with the time that we have left. Just about two yes, minutes. Yes, um, the returning students, uh, some of the states have already opened and students have returned. I know that of Lagos State will be tomorrow. Yeah. And, um, but it's only for um, those writing, uh, writing wire, the GSS3 and um, SS3 students, so not just the whole students. And I believe that um, some measures have been put in place, um, bearing in mind the, and the uh, NCDC. We're always missing this thing up now. NCDC and the NDDC, <laughs> you know, um, protocols. And um, I think we can be able to do that so that they can wrap up this examination and go back home. Yeah. It is much easier and better that way because the, wide, the West African Examination Council is not just about Nigeria, but the West African region. So, um, so I, I think that then the good one, uh, as rightly mentioned, um, the one from Ogun State, where the government have rescinded the 25,000 Naira COVID-19 test. That to me um, is a good one because there's no need for that at all. Um, so, but within the next two months, we believe that the examination will be wrapped up and the student will go back home while we await what is going to happen in the next few months to see whether the, um, the pandemic will just give way for full resumption of schools. Yeah. Then, but my own worry also is that those in tertiary institutions, those in final year, university, polytechnic, and the rest of them, are, also, are they also going to be allowed to go back to school to take the examination? That in itself is also a big, a big one. Um, then EPIS, as we said, uh, is a global thing. Um, just yesterday, I know that um, um, British Airways um, called down um, the number, I think it's called down um, salaries of uh, start by about 30% or thereabouts, and some of the um, pilots were also allowed to go. Yeah. Then for APs, um, 70 pilots and um, about 40% gone down in salary. It is a global thing, it's across the uh, globe. In fact, some, um, I'm happy that none of our airline has um, gone under. Um, because if we go to even advanced countries like um, Australia and the rest of them, some airlines have really gone under within these few periods of COVID. So I, think, I believe that with time, things will be able to stabilize. Don't forget that we've not fully um, opened up our airspace. Um, we've not started international flights and the rest of them. So, but it's a gradual thing, which I believe with time. That, but um, good enough also, the same APs has just um, purchased 30 new aircraft. 
Um, that in itself also shows that they believe in the economy, the Nigerian economy. Yeah. Because if you don't believe in the Nigerian economy, you wouldn't want you to invest that much and the rest yeah. of them. So um, it's a question of time, and I'm sure that um, we'll be able to get across that and um, we'll be back to normal. But um, that's one, uh, an airline that sold two of his aircraft a few days ago, if you remember, yeah. uh, just to pay off some of his debt. So and the aviation industry is one of the highest and the hardest hit uh, when it comes to COVID-19. And it may just be so for the next two or yeah. three years, as, as experts have already said. Now, um, let's throw, quickly share your thoughts on the uh, $400 million uh, um, Abuja CCTV project loan. Uh, the APC, of course, asking the PDP to um respond to it's very funny um the way we do things in nigeria um the apc came up with that because the pdp said that it should account for the loans that have been taken and um <laughs> to me that is not the answer if you you're in government and you are asked to account for the money you have um, you are spending or you have collected on behalf of Nigeria, you should be able to do that. Yeah. Not so, oh, no. Uh, um, so because you caught me as a thief, um, others have also say, oh, you after all, you are number number to how come that? That is not the way to go. We have the right to know what the money is. Yes, if you think that a, a PDP has not accounted, then set up a probe. Yeah. And those corporate you know the right thing to do. You understand what I'm trying to say? Yes, you, you don't need to ask them to account for it. The federal government has the right to set up a probe. If there are money that, we are, that money was misappropriated, those that misappropriated that money are Nigerians and they live in Nigeria. They can be prosecuted. But that does not mean that you should not be able to account for the one there. So, well, uh, <laughs> sincerely, uh, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, so, asking the PDP to account for the Abuja CCTV, yeah, yes. If they misappropriated, yes, because, and it's a fact, because that project did not work for one day. Yeah. Who were those that signed the agreement? Who were those that were paid the money? What did they use the money for? Are they non names? If you don't have their names, go to CAC, you get the names of board of directors on those, get them arrested and make sure that they repay the money. Yeah. But that does not stop you from accounting for the one you are collecting. Right. So um, I don't think that uh, such a statement makes any sense to me. Chris Wando is a publisher for CKN News. Thank you so much for uh, being with us this morning and off the press and, of course, uh, sharing your thoughts on these stories um, across the whole country. Thank you very much for um, having me. It's interesting, and we hope that, of course, uh, things uh, do improve. We pray so. We sincerely pray so. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much for, of course, uh, being with us. Uh, Nine o'clock, we have uh, more news headlines coming your way. Don't go anywhere.